Preliminary test results have come in on Jaclyn Cosmetics lipsticks, and Jaclyn has an interesting response to the drama. Welcome to the final part of this series on Jaclyn Cosmetics. If you haven't seen the first two videos on the situation, make sure you watch those first in order to understand the full situation. Please do not send any hate to Jaclyn Hill, Marlena Stell, Kevin James Bennett, or anyone else mentioned in this story. This video is simply meant to report on the news and give insight on the situation. Also, since this is the final part in a three-part series, please wait until the end of the video before forming your full opinion on what went down. With that out of the way, let's get into the tea. On June 22, Jaclyn Hill went on her Instagram story to address the lipstick situation again. She started the video by saying she missed being online. I can't believe how attached I am to you guys because just this past week not being on social media has made me realize how much I miss you and love you and not talking to you guys on a daily basis and communication has just been like the craziest thing ever. She said she didn't like the first video she did addressing her lipsticks. I can't even tell you like how much that video makes me cringe because I just felt so much pressure and like panicked to get a video up and like sit there and be like, look, I have the facts. I swear to God, like I have all the results right here. Like I just wanted to like defend my brand so bad and I look at that and I'm just like, oh my gosh, Jacqueline, like calm down. Like I needed to take a step back for a moment and breathe and I did not take that time. Throughout the previous week, Jacqueline said she had been trying to fix the situation. I have done everything, honestly, that you can think of. I have consulted with so many CEOs the past 10 days, figuring out how exactly to fix this, make it right and make sure it never happens again. You know, this is a whole new world for me, having my own brand and not having a collaboration. And the last thing I want to be known as is the girl who puts out crappy products, like it breaks my heart. She said she was testing the lipsticks herself. At this point, I have sent out my lipsticks to five different labs, five different places that test product and vigorously and spent over $100,000 on this process. It's just like, it sucks and I'm so disappointed in myself. Jacqueline said she didn't want to get emotional and make it look like she was playing the victim. I don't cry over this because I'm like, oh, poor me, this just sucks. You know, it's like, I get emotional because I'm just so disappointed in myself that I could even somehow allow this to happen. She also gave some updates on her company. Long story short, the lab that I worked with, I will never be working with again. Obviously, there's been many people fired over this. Um, we've got an entire new team that we are building now for quality control because obviously that didn't work. <sighs> and I'm going to push back several launches that I have because it's just not like really hone in on this and learn from my mistakes and learn some very valuable lessons so that hopefully one day I can prove myself to you guys no matter how long that takes. Jacqueline said she and her team decided to give every customer a full refund, even though she said there were many customers who loved their lipsticks. It doesn't look like it on social media, but with all the emails in the back end, there's a lot of people out there who love their lipsticks and that's great, but I don't care. Like, I don't care if you know, 195,000 people love to lipstick. If three people are having an issue, like that, that's what's gonna keep me awake at night. So it's really important to me that I make this right. So I'm gonna be issuing a full refund, including shipping and tax to every single customer from Jacqueline Cosmetics because that's the only thing that I feel like is gonna make this right. And I don't care about the loss of this money. I could give a damn. She said most customers should receive an email with their refund in the next 24 hours, and she apologized again for letting the situation happen. Jacqueline Cosmetics also emailed their customers with the same message. Some customers supported Jacqueline and the company. I like mine a lot. I don't need a refund. I wear them every day. There's no need for a recall just because it has air pockets in it. It's all FDA approved ingredients, so no matter how it's mixed, it's safe to use. These people attacking her must have never made a mistake before. I appreciate you doing the right thing for the long haul of the company. I'm sorry to see it didn't work out perfectly as planned, but I'm looking forward to the future for your brand. Other people thought she was doing the right thing, but it wasn't enough. The refunds are great, about time, but they're still not addressing the bits of metal and are standing by the our product is safe but not up to our perfectionist standards line. Good on her for this. 
That's the best thing to do now. I just want her to explain how she was possibly not lying by saying she worked so hard for so long and did so much quality control and fired a lab before because they weren't up to par and is working with the best places in the USA. Or how she didn't go into production until the month she launched, but still claims she did extensive quality control. She wants trust but won't own up to obvious lies. Hooray! The bare minimum! Bare minimum should be her brand's name. A few people said she should have done this sooner. If she had just done this shit after it became clear there were widespread issues, she could have come out of this looking good, honestly. She could have said it was the manufacturer, her samples were fine, she's so sorry and horrified, etc., and refunded everyone. And I feel like people would have given her a second shot if she reformulated and released again down the road. Now it just seems like she finally got legal counsel and is in full damage control mode. She just handled this all completely wrong. You can tell she is a terrible businesswoman. It's like she wants to be a case study of how to not be professional. Several people were concerned about Jacqueline's legal issues. Is it possibly a legal reason that they aren't outright saying our products are unsafe? I know everybody is trashing this for not being a full recall address of safety issues, but I imagine that is the wisest legal choice. It's 100% a legal issue. If you say the products are unsafe, you're openly admitting fault. But that said, saying our products are definitely safe to use is also a massive liability and never should have come out of Jacqueline's mouth. I suspect that Jacqueline digging her heels in about them being safe has now led her to the point where she can't really go back on it, even if the facts are obvious. If she admits they're unsafe now, she'd be eviscerated in court for insisting to consumers for two weeks that the products were fine despite knowing full well that they weren't. Others were upset she seemed to be downplaying the issues and noticed the pattern with her other apologies. I find it super annoying that she's still downplaying the number of people that have had issues. She says something like the fact that people have had positive experiences outweigh the negative, but even if 3 out of 195,000 people had a bad experience, she wants to make things right. Have you seen Twitter? I'm sure the fraction of people with issues is much higher than that, Jack. She's doing that thing again. In her truth video, she was saying how incredibly low the percentage of the return pallets was, and she begged people who bought them to reach out to her. In her lipsticks video, she was talking as if not enough people were reaching out to the customer service email. And now, once again, she talks about an abundance of people who received incredible lipsticks as opposed to a small minority who didn't. I'm for second chances in most situations, but in my opinion, Jacqueline doesn't deserve a second shot with her brand. Her handling of all this unwillingness to take responsibility is insanely horrible. This also isn't her first shot. Bad launches are consistent with her brand as an influencer. Her customers and products aren't her main concern, and in my opinion, she's not a safe person to buy anything from. Some people were curious about the lab tests Jacqueline mentioned. I'm particularly interested in the snippet where she talks about spending $100,000 on sending her lipsticks to five different labs and then switches to something else. Screw refunds! I want to know those lab results, Jack. If those labs find anything negative, she will never share it. The fact that she's refunding now that she's done all the testing makes me think they did find something. And a few people were glad other people were getting their lipsticks tested. Good thing other people are sending their lipsticks to a lab so they can share results. I think this was the reason for the sudden announcement of refunds for all. Better to get ahead of the drama before one of the more legitimate YouTubers comes back with whatever results. Plus, even if the results come back free of microbial contaminants, there's no getting around shards of metal, white fuzzies, black pubic care, etc. Does she really need to spend $100,000 to learn her sh is contaminated one way or another? Kevin James Bennett commented on Jacqueline's Instagram story. Thoughts on the Jaclyn Hill video? Full makeup, filters, and an empowered women t-shirt? Subliminal messaging for the stance. Gotta give her props. She's an elite level con artist. It's a masterclass in deception. Mesmerizing and terrifying all at the same time. Jen Loves Reviews replied to Kevin's tweet. What got me was the declaration of love at the beginning. How being away for a week was so hard. Correct me if I'm wrong, but hasn't she taken months off before? I'd be curious to know if she has ever interacted with a single non-influencer subscriber. It was a clever setup though. Kevin also expressed concern about people accepting refunds. I suggest you all read the tiny print at the bottom of your Jaclyn Cosmetics refund. By accepting the refund, you might be relinquishing your right to take legal action later on. After customers started noticing weird things with their Jaclyn Cosmetics lipsticks, some people with scientific backgrounds started testing the lipsticks. 
One of those people was Betty Wilder, a quality control director with over 25 years of experience in food science and manufacturing. She had been tracking her progress with testing the lipsticks on Twitter, and on June 23rd, she had some interesting results. Approximately 120 hour microbial check. Confirmed positive yeast mold results on lid sample control freak. This is from a swab of the cap of a component. All other samples negative. Attached to the tweets were photos of the lid sample and the other samples. A few days later, she posted more preliminary results. This is why it is important not to jump to conclusions. This contaminant that I showed last week had everyone either saying, fraud, this was placed there, or OMG, look at that mold, we're all going to die. Well, it's not mold. That little piece is by the letter C on the plate. It has been incubating along with a swab of the lipstick it came off of for five days now, and there is no sign of growth. My best educated guess looking at it under the microscope is that it is made up of lipstick, dust, and fibers. Is it still a contaminant? Absolutely. It should not be there, and it is absolutely unacceptable. Some people were upset with the results. It's so unfortunate that people who wanted to actively support somebody ended up getting sick by that said somebody. Like, this stuff isn't just drama. This is an actual public health concern. This really needs to be taken seriously. Thank you for showing the results. Can someone just call the police already and get her arrested? Like, this is insane. She needs to pay for medical expenses, and she needs to get sued. It's the only way to force her not to put out harmful products. She needs to be compelled to, legally, unfortunately. Others were wondering how the mold got on the component. Well, damn, how is it just on the lid though, and not the lipstick? Depending on where on the lid it was swabbed, it could very easily be a contaminant. Mold spores are all over in the air and on your hands, so it being on the outside of the cap or somewhere that she had touched makes sense. Otherwise, the mold in previous pictures is actually growing from inside the cap and sticking to the lipstick, not growing from the lipstick itself? I work with live cultures as a regular part of my job. I can 100% attest to the notion that mold and yeast are everywhere, even in our sterilized work cabinets. If you move suddenly, or a gust of air flows behind you, you can get mold in your samples. Swabbing from the lid wouldn't tell me much, but I think it's interesting that there's no growth from the actual lipsticks themselves. Either way, these are only preliminary results, and I would wait for the final data before making any conclusions about this biological contamination issue. A few people had theories on the components being old, wondering if it's possible the component was old and infected the actual lipstick product. That still doesn't answer the other issues, shards of metal and other foreign objects. Could the new components have been previously filled with old product and then refilled with new? She could have made the old ones, delayed launch, and had to remake for whatever reason, but wanted to reuse the original packaging? Not sure if that would even logically work, but it's all I can think of. And someone was excited about makeup lovers getting involved in science. Can we just take a minute and give it up for 2019, the year when sales of microscopes skyrocketed and thousands of makeup enthusiasts discovered a deep passion for science? Despite Jacqueline saying she spent over $100,000 in testing, Jacqueline Cosmetics seemed to be very interested in Betty's results. On June 24th, they sent Betty an email. Hi Betty, we're reaching out about the So Rich lipstick testing you've shared on social media. Jaclyn Cosmetics takes product safety very seriously, and we'd love an opportunity to dig deeper into the findings. Can you please share the full report of testing with us so we can conduct a full investigation? If you could also share your order confirmation with us, that would help us to better identify the lipsticks in question. Thanks so much. We look forward to hearing from you. Jaclyn Cosmetics. Betty replied, I heard Miss Hill is paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to conduct her own testing. Certainly that will suffice to provide you with answers to any questions you may have. If you have any further questions about sufficient quality control measures for future launches, you may inquire about my consulting fees. Keep it bougie, Betty Wilder. People loved Betty's response. The keep it bougie in her response email sends me. Such a polite way to say go f yourselves. I love she told them about her fees too. Effing power move. What a class act. The way they ask for a full report rubs me the wrong way. Like, you're not paying her. Why would she write up a report just for you? But some people wondered why Jacqueline Cosmetics wanted Betty's results. Of course we're doing independent testing, sweats nervously. We just wanted to compare with your testing. I bet this isn't because they want extra testing. They're probably getting geared up for litigation in case the claims were false or misleading. Exactly. It's the only real reason a company would ask. 
unless they really are so utterly incompetent, they think they need strangers on the internet to help them figure out what's wrong with their product. Feels like a scare tactic to me. Why not just test the return lipsticks for contaminants and release those results? Why be so unprofessional and ask your customers to give you test results they paid money for? Probably to examine the claims and see if they're false, misleading, to see if she has a case for a defamation lawsuit or something. On June 25th, Marlene Estelle posted a video titled Dear Influencers. She talked about a lot of things in her video, including her relationships with different influencers, drama she's been involved in, and what's been going on with her company, Makeup Geek. But she also spoke about her relationship with Jaclyn Hill and what she knew about the lipstick situation. Marlena talked about how she and Jaclyn met, and she credited Jaclyn for helping Makeup Geek. She had used the products in her video that she had bought and we saw like a spike in some of these sales. We're like, okay, where is this coming from? Because we were like virtually like, we're literally at the bottom, like we just started. And so we kind of formed a relationship there. And to this day, she has been the number one person who has like pretty much built Makeup Geek up to that reputation because she had used them so much. And so I owe her the hugest thanks for that. I've always said like, I will never deny that you did so much to help Makeup Geek grow and I'm so grateful for that. According to Marlena, Jacqueline told her she wanted to start her own makeup line in 2013. Jacqueline asked Marlena for advice and Marlena helped her the best she could. Marlena shared emails she sent Jacqueline with information about starting her own line, as well as information about their failed collaboration. In an email dated September 7, 2014, Marlena wrote, Hi sweetie, I hope you're doing great and are coming along with your makeup line. It's a lot of work, but if it's something you're passionate about, it'll do great. While Marlena and Jacqueline were working on their collaboration, Marlena said she was helping Jacqueline find vendors for her makeup line. Around February 2015, Jacqueline and her mom Robin were looking into distribution centers to ship out Jacqueline's products when her brand launched. Marlena and her distribution team crunched the numbers and had a video conference with Jacqueline and Robin. In an email dated February 6, 2015, Nick Reichert, Makeup Geek's chief operating officer at the time, wrote, Hi Jacqueline and Robin, it was so great talking with you today. Again, feel free to shoot us a note with questions or concerns and we'll do our best to help out. In the meantime, here is some contact info for you. Cardboard, outer packaging. The blacked out information is Marlena's internal team's emails and phone numbers, and a reputable vendor for cardboard packaging. On August 24, 2015, Marlena sent an email to a manufacturer. I was wondering if your team was available on September 7th and 8th to visit. I know Jacqueline was wanting to visit as well, and we would probably come at the same time if that is okay with you. On September 2nd, 2015, Marlena wrote an email to Jacqueline about another manufacturer. Hi sweetie, here's the info. Let her know Marlena from Makeup Geek referred you. Here's what I feel the best things they have are. Powder products, eyeshadows, blushes, face powders, lip glosses, and lip creams. Not as good with lipsticks, not bad though. They have a huge lab, but production time is very long. About nine months at least to get a product launched. Make sure you start the process early because they take longer than other smaller labs. When she read this email, Marlena gave some more context on the fulfillment process. Just for you guys to know from a fulfillment standpoint, general manufacturing time from start to finish is minimum nine months. You could possibly do it sooner if you really hustle, maybe if it's a smaller lab and their time, lead times are not as much, but you pretty much have to get in line. These labs do production for many different companies, and especially if it's a larger lab, it's gonna take a bit longer because they have production for massive companies that can take weeks at a time to finish up. So then when it's your slot, it's just a very big process, many steps along the way it's very complicated and so it takes time to do that so that was what i was mentioning to her this is your timeline for that during 2015 and 2016 marlena and jacqueline were going back and forth trying to figure out when to release their palette one of the big issues was the timing with jacqueline's other collaborations and makeup geeks other launches in an email dated february 13 2016 jacqueline mentioned launching her lipsticks my palette has to be pushed back to august because of changes we made and delays and then my lipsticks are going to be right before holidays. If you're interested in knowing more about what happened with the Makeup Geek collaboration, 
Drama channels Tea by Ally, Here for the Tea, and Tea Spill have videos that go through all the emails sent between Jacqueline and Makeup Geek. In her video, Marlena said she pulled the plug on the collaboration. The whole story was as we couldn't find a timeline to work. I didn't have a contract signed. It was my fault. I take full blame for that. The reason I didn't was because there was a friendship there and because there was no indication along the way that this wouldn't happen. I knew the dates were going to be pushed around. In the end, I was the one that pulled the con that, that stopped the collaboration, not Jacqueline. The reason why was because we already ordered the product. It was in our warehouse for five months at this point and I was afraid that these were going to expire and go bad and I can't have non-fresh product being sold so I was like okay we have to make this happen soon or I need to find a plan B to get these going out. Between 2016 and 2019 Marlena said she had no ill will towards Jacqueline over their failed palette but she had a problem with her dishonesty with several other collaborations. What I do have a problem with, however, is dishonesty. And I have felt over the last few projects that she's done, there wasn't full transparency on some things. And I did text her on my phone personally, privately the end of last year to say, look, cause when she saw that I posted the truth video, um, I could tell she was upset from that. I was like, that video was not even aimed at you. You were not one that has like tried to take, um, had do sponsorships and if you did like whatever, it's, it's not about that. It's not directed at you at all. She said she confronted Jacqueline over the phone with her concerns. And so we had talked back and forth and kind of had a, like a heated discussion. She had points that were valid. I had points that were valid. And I said, look, I don't agree with some of the things that have been said about like collaborations and the timing of things. I know in my experience of production that having a new batch of stuff shipped from a completely different country in three weeks is, is logistically and physically impossible. So I shared my concerns. I'm like, you know, if you, if there's some other truth that's going on behind the scenes that maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Marlena said she felt like once Jacqueline no longer needed her, she abandoned their friendship. I will say this, I was a bit personally hurt um, from not, once I was mentoring her, it just kind of stopped. And I will say, I will admit that I was hurt from that on a personal level. Cause I was like, it felt to me, this is my personal opinion. It felt as if we were friends when I was able to help her with that. And when she maybe didn't need the information or maybe she found someone else to mentor her, that I was kind of kicked to the curb. I hope I'm wrong with that but that's my personal issue to deal with. I was upset about that. I'm not upset about that anymore now. Fast forward to 2019. When Jacqueline launched her lipsticks, Marlena was excited because she knew Jacqueline was working on a lipstick line for years. She said she wasn't concerned when people were first sharing pictures of their lipsticks. When the lipsticks launched, it started coming out with people saying that the lipsticks were scratchy or whatever. And my first thought was, okay, people are being dramatic or whatever. They're just trying to find something to tear apart whatever. But she said she became worried when she started seeing more and more people say their lipsticks weren't good. This is what made me speak up was when I think it was Brianna and I, I've, I've met Brianna. We've contacted her. We've stayed in touch with her over the years and she's truly genuine. She's a good person. I don't feel her to be dishonest or anything. She pulled the lipstick out, the long hair out of the lipstick. And I was like, Ugh, that's not as good. After Marlena saw Raw Beauty Christie's video, she said she knew the lipsticks were contaminated. I saw Christie do her microscope thing, then I'm like, okay, this is now not just a fluke thing, like this is contamination. Whether it's a dangerous one or not, things being embedded in lipsticks with all of those things, it's not just one thing, that is contamination. That's just factual of what it is. When she saw all the contamination, Marlena said she was pretty sure she knew what lab made Jacqueline's lipsticks. On June 6, 2016, Marlena was at that lab working on concealers that she never launched. She showed her internal quality control pictures in the video, and the products seemed to have all the issues from Jacqueline's lipsticks, plastic shards, metal shards, fingerprints, black specks, and hairs. The day Marlena was at the questionable lab, she said she saw Jacqueline there. So that I'm sitting in my lab, and I'm down in my lab rep's office, which is kind of weird because usually I'm in the conference room. And so I was like, this is kind of odd. And my lab rep was kind of like fumbling around, like trying to tell me like, oh, we didn't have this date scheduled. I was like, no, it's on the calendar right here. And my team is coming with me. So it was me, myself, and two other of my staff members were there. So we're sitting there working on product. One of my staff members go to the bathroom, comes back and was like, Jacqueline's here. And I was like, okay, oh, that's okay. Well, Jacqueline's here, okay. And I didn't go down because she was in the conference room with another um, 
we'll just say another person. And my lab rep, as soon as she heard that, my uh, staff member came in and said, Jacqueline's here. This is unprofessional for the lab rep's part. was like, oh yeah, we're working on Jacqueline's lipsticks. After Marlena saw the bad quality of her own products from that lab, she told Jacqueline not to use them. I was like, look, I've had issues with these concealers. I know you were at this lab or whatever, or if, you know, I don't know who's doing your lipsticks, honestly, but don't work with this lab because I had a real problem with them. And she said this lab is known to have issues. It is well known, this is why I'm so vocal, is because it is well known now behind the scenes of the beauty community with many manufacturers, with other CEOs, with other labs. The whole industry behind the scenes now knows that this one specific lab has had an issue multiple times with multiple peoples with producing, I'm just going to say it, product. Some people thought Jacqueline used the products she made with the questionable lab in her 2019 launch. We know that Jacqueline had to stop working with the lab in 2017 due to quality issues, but now I wonder if she kept some of the products from that production and decided to launch them anyway. I don't know how a new lab was able to churn out 300,000 units in three to four weeks if production times are as long as Marlena says they are. The video gave me closure on Marlena's behavior and raise more questions about Jacqueline's ethics. The fact that Jacqueline probably went ahead after being warned about quality control issues tells you everything you need to know about the kind of CEO she is. Also note the fact that Jacqueline put that girl on blast about saying there was a problem with the lipstick when she had already been warned by Marlena about quality issues. Oh my god. A few people speculated that Jeffree Star used the same lab for his early products, which lines up with what Kevin James Bennett said in the Jen Loves Reviews livestream. Jeffrey had skin frosts that were being delivered with long black hairs and or wires embedded in the product. Someone said they thought it was the same lab in the Instagram story Marlena posted chatting with chemists. He also had lipsticks that looked like the Jacqueline Cosmetics lipsticks, but worse. Current reviews don't mention this and generally are good, so we fixed the issue. And someone made a joke about the video. Marlena Stell proving Jacqueline Hill is a good woman? But she is a liar! When Marlena posted her video, Jacqueline started posting old childhood photos on Twitter. She was also allegedly liking fans' tweets about her. Funny how you start tweeting, liking a ton of fans' tweets to you the moment Marlena posts her video. I've never seen you interact so much on here. You can't distract everyone from the truth. You've become the shadiest person ever, and it sucks because I used to be a huge fan. Disappointing. Someone made a joke about Jacqueline's behavior. Marlena, dear influencers, Jacqueline. On June 26th, T-Spill tweeted out screenshots of comments speculating that the automatic refunds were done to prevent a lawsuit. Jacqueline quote tweeted T-Spill and wrote, this is 100% not true. Commentary channel Smoky Glow replied, No offense, because I used to be a big supporter, but why would I believe you? You have yet to tell the truth about anything regarding this situation. Jacqueline said, I have told the full truth. Everything that I know, I've shared with you other than confidential things. You don't have to believe me, but I've been honest. She deleted that tweet soon after she posted it. Someone shared a screenshot of the tweet and wrote, Jacqueline Hill, why'd you delete the tweets? Oh right, because you claiming to be telling the truth is also a flat out lie. Girl, bye. Jacqueline replied, I deleted it because I immediately got hateful comments, and although everything I stated is 1000% true, I need to protect my mental state first and foremost. I know people think that makes me a victim, but honestly, my sanity needs to come first. Soon after she tweeted that, she deactivated all her social media accounts. Jacqueline Hill Closet, an Instagram fan page, posted a statement about Jacqueline not being on social media. Jacqueline's social media accounts are down. She needs some time away from the criticism. Jacqueline is human just like all of us, and we all make mistakes. I can look back at quite a few in my life. It's not easy when you're down and you see all the negativity. Some forget Jacqueline has had great success as well. I don't need to list them in this post, but I will say her kind heart is one of her greatest attributes, and that to me is success. I know I will also be attacked by some for saying how can I know this information. Her boyfriend's mom is a very kind person and follows me. I messaged her because I was worried. Jacqueline is safe. She just needs time. John Hill, Jacqueline's ex-husband, also posted a statement. Jacqueline deleted all her social media. I really hate to see this happen. People shouldn't underestimate the power of compassion. We're all human and make mistakes. A lot of people thought Jacqueline deactivating her social media didn't look good. Oop, Jack, this is not a good look, girly. I miss you guys so much. 
delete social media. Oh my, this is after she got accused of giving everyone refunds so they can't sue her or something. Deleting all her socials doesn't make me think, poor girl struggling that just needs a break. It makes me think it's trying to dodge justified feedback about her product and hope it'll go away if no one can contact her. It sure as hell doesn't make me want to trust her or buy from her brand. Others said it was irresponsible. Her own actions caused this. Take some responsibility, Jacqueline. I think it's wise for her to take a break from social media. However, I do think that she did put people's safety at risk in a major way with this launch. Cotton fuzzies aren't harmless. They're porous and could be carrying any number of contaminants that are now embedded in her product. Metal shards and lipstick? Definitely harmful. By staying silent for a week after reports came coming in about issues with her lipsticks, by touting that her product is completely safe without providing proof of lab testing, and by waiting to issue refunds until enormous backlash and petitions for recalls came in, I think she has clearly shown that she values the bottom line more than the safety of her customers. She doesn't deserve to be attacked over the internet. However, I think she handled the whole situation horribly. I get that the situation is stressful. I'm sure some overdramatic people have sent threats over this because the internet is a wild place. And that's not okay. However, this isn't like someone being criticized for a body feature or their skin color or something they can't change. There is a specific situation that this drama revolves around. Maybe she could take a huge load off and help her mental state by actually addressing it properly instead of incomplete answers, half arsed excuses, and now running away. A few people thought she was deleting things from her accounts. She finally hired a fixer and not a family member because she can see the writing on the wall. I'm sure they told her to disable immediately. Most, all her content on her socials regarding lipsticks will be scrubbed for legal reasons. Suddenly, she will come back from her dark place, lol, say she wanted to put all that negativity behind her, and that's why it's deleted. If she wanted a break, she should just step away from the phone for a while. If she's deleting things, it's and people will find out anyways. But some people understood why she stepped away. She made a huge mistake. That doesn't mean she has to take a public beating for it on her own personal social media channels for eternity. She's clearly understood that she f***ed up. When will she have received enough criticism? According to the internet, never. And she should shut up and take it. She'll continue to get hate whether or not she has her socials up. So she might as well make it harder for people to accuse her of trying to hurt people intentionally. Everyone is theoretically clutching their pearls about the fact that someone could get hurt. From what I've seen, no one has personally suffered. I don't even like or care about her, but the sheer amount of hate she is receiving is really disgusting. Is her business support line still up? Is her business Twitter still up? Yes and yes. They're separate, and she's right to draw a line. Protecting mental health is important. Regardless of what people feel about her, she's had a lot of hate sent her way. And that aside, the failure of her launch has her most likely feeling low enough already. If she had cancer, would you react this way? People need to stop being so flippant about mental health. I'm not saying she's not guilty or is a complete victim, but she's refunding everyone. It's over. Be decent. People send threats for mundane things. Can only imagine the hateful vitriol she's received. While I agree it's a bad look on her end, the internet has turned people into savages. Shortly after Jacqueline deactivated her social media, her website was no longer offering the lipsticks. On June 26th, a Redditor posted an interesting theory about the lab Jacqueline allegedly used. We now have fully solid concrete evidence of the lab Jacqueline used allegedly. From what I understand, Kevin James Bennett posted this earlier today. The Redditor linked a tweet by Kevin that was part of a thread. The original tweet said, I discovered which manufacturer made the Jacqueline Cosmetics lipsticks in Florida, not in Hungary. Marlena, it's not the one you think, it's the other. Jacqueline Hill, you and your team have some explaining to do. The tweet the Redditor linked had a screenshot that appeared to show the certification ID for Jacqueline's alleged lab. He blurred the lab's name. Back to the post. The Redditor continued, I then saw on Twitter that lab Hills then posted this shortly after. They linked to a tweet from Lab Hills that appeared to link the certification ID to a lab called Oxygen Development. The Redditor wrote, Just for kicks, I searched Oxygen Development on Google to see if it was legit. And sure enough, there just so happens to be a plethora of photos online showing the inside of the 
oxygen development facility, as the construction company who built it just so happens to feature the building on their website. Lucky us! Jacqueline herself then put the final nail in coffin, as her own Jacqueline Cosmetics promotional video on her website shows her in her lab. And guess what? The interiors of her lab appear to match up visually with the pictures of oxygen development. I circled some of the corresponding elements of the facility shown in Jacqueline's video and the photos online of oxygen development, such as the same uniquely shaped long rectangular windows, the same columns, and the same blue and orange industrial storage shelving. The posts had side-by-side -side pictures of oxygen development and the Jacqueline Cosmetics video. People in the comments found more sketchy things about the lab online. Seems like the one-star reviews make the most sense. Disgusting bathrooms, two of them for a thousand plus people. Not passing health inspections, racist managers, yikes. From Glassdoor Reviews, after seeing how cosmetics are made here, I would never put that stuff on my face. Extremely unsanitary processes and no safety procedures in place. The floor workers are taken advantage of. Glassdoor shows a $62,000 to $69,000 salary range for a senior chemist. That's pretty low for a place with such a high cost of living. I made $60,000 as an entry-level chemist in New Hampshire, and several people made jokes about the lab. Oh, and look, not a fuzzy glove to be had in any of the pictures. No, just bare hands instead. Oxygen development bubbles? Beauty blogger Zadidal tweeted, I can neither confirm nor deny that Oxygen in Florida is indeed Jacqueline's second manufacturer. I do know that particular manufacturer has had issues in the past, including having hazmat out there in the early 2010s and has had one FDA warning. They are also SGS certified. On the same day, Angie Bergs, the chemist who released a video discussing Jacqueline's ingredients, made another video talking about the documents Jacqueline showed in her My Lipsticks video. She works in manufacturing and has seen documents similar to these in her line of work. Angie said most of the documents don't mean much to the average consumer. They mean more to people who are looking to work with this manufacturing facility. She said the certificate of good manufacturing process may appear to be out of date, but it might not actually be out of date. So it's just a template that they have and they fill it out that's attached to whatever this procedure is. And that's why it says effective date 417. They just haven't updated the template since 2017, which really isn't that long. As long as everything still applies, they're not going to update it. Angie also gave information on the second document, which appeared to be an audit done on the manufacturer. Third party audits like this are very common. They kind of just show that you meet someone's standards. This is just a third party saying, hey, this place follows our standards, they're good. But unless you know what those, unless you're familiar with it and know what those standards are, that doesn't mean a lot to you. Again, this would mean a lot for somebody who's looking to work with them. She addressed the concerns people had when they found what appeared to be similar documents from a facility in Belgium. And this other one did have it and it says in Belgium, but that's a very common thing, especially if this SGS company is based out of Belgium. It's very common for them to send auditors over or they'll have auditors maybe in the US that will go over. So a lot of people were worried about this and thought that she was using this lab in Hungary or wherever it ended up being. I don't think that facility in Hungary has anything to do with Jaclyn Hill's facility just appears that they both got audited by the same company, which obviously this is a company that audits people, so that makes sense. Angie said the only concerning part from the consulting firm's report was their use of the term anhydrous, meaning something has no water. And it says that their product is anhydrous. It does say it has water on the ingredients list, so that's not really anhydrous. So I don't know what's going on with that. And it does have preservatives, so nothing should grow. And basically it said it wasn't necessary for them to do these microbiological tests because there's no water, there is water in it. She said the document consumers could get the most information from was the lab analysis. And Angie said she thought there should have been micro testing. So I think it they probably should have done it at least for a while until they had multiple batches proving they didn't need to do it. She also talked about the difference between batch codes and lot numbers. This number kind of shows what she was talking about, like the VAT. This would go, this is whatever they made in that VAT. And it has a lot number. So how those differentiate is say you got like a full-size bite beauty lipstick, and they were filling those full bite beauty lipsticks from this big VAT. They say they fill like 500 of the big tubes of 
lipstick. So that is assigned a lot number. But then if they still have some left in this batch, but say they want to fill like the little ones, that's going to have a different lot number because you have a different components going into. That's why we not only have a batch number, if the whole batch is bad, you can throw away the whole batch. But if you have, let's say something only went wrong with the little lipsticks, then you could just fix the little lipsticks because you know that there's not a problem with the big lipsticks. And she said she didn't understand why the lipsticks only had a production code on the bottom, not their designated batch codes. I don't know why they use this production code because those codes help you control if one of the color, if, if it was only like a couple of shades that were bad, then they could have just brought them back and been like, oh, it's only these two shades. But now you've had to recall the whole line, which is a huge, huge problem and very costly. Finally, Angie said the document proved someone checked the lipsticks and either didn't notice problems or ignored them. And that's where it shows somebody checked it, but unless these problems occurred after the checks, like they should have noticed a lot of the problems that were on there. On June 29th, Robin Sumrall, Jacqueline's mother, made an Instagram post addressing the situation. I want to thank each and every one of you for your wonderful messages, thoughts, and prayers for Jacqueline during this time. As her mom, it has been heartbreaking in so many ways. It was difficult and so very disappointing enough that some of her lipsticks had issues, but the onslaught of hate, lies, and even betrayal has by far been the worst part. It has been shocking. No one deserves to be beaten when they are already sad and down. But this post is not intended to focus on the negative, but rather the positivity that has come out of this. From the bottom of my heart, I want to thank those of you who are true and loyal followers and friends of Jacqueline. I've always said that she has the very best followers of all. You all are the most kind, sweet, and beautiful souls inside and out, and Jacqueline truly loves you. I love you. It has always been an honor to meet you, whether it's in person or through a written message. I am so very grateful for each and every one of you, and I wish I could personally give each one a hug. Thank you for having faith in her and forgiving her. Please know that Jacqueline needs time, but she will be back stronger than ever. She is surrounded by love and support, and she will get through this. She will dust herself off, learn from her mistakes, and try again. After all, she has a dream to fulfill, and as long as I have breath in my body, I will always be her cheerleader. Please join me in continuing to cheer her on as true friends do, and thank you for having courage and being kind. After receiving some backlash, Robin turned off comments on the post. People had issues with what Robin said. It's not your fault, sweetie. The whole world is wrong. What do manufacturing experts, scientists, or lab employees know? You're the one that's right. Just keep doing you, sweetie. XOXO, Jacqueline's mom. So if you critique her, not a true and loyal follower, what the f Maybe, just maybe, hold your daughter accountable and have her own her as a CEO. She wanted to wear the big girl pants and now she has to deal with it. I'm sorry, but this is unreal. This message is exactly the sort of unprofessional and amateurism people have been banging on about. You're a grown woman. Grown women do not send their moms to do their dirty work while you hide. Robin later privated her Instagram account. While all this was going on, more test results started coming in. On June 30th, Betty Wilder posted some updated conclusions. Based on my initial testing and the admissions of Jaclyn Cosmetics, they are in violation of the FD&C Act prohibiting the marketing of adulterated or misbranded cosmetics in interstate commerce. This product must be recalled. Cotton gloves are porous, and therefore, if these were used on the production line, as stated in YouTube video My Lipsticks, not only were products contaminated with fibers, but by human skin cells and any viral, bacterial, or fungal contaminants on the human hand. Poor mixing, as admitted to, results in silica, clay, and pigment ingredients settling to the tip of the lipstick. These ingredients may cause scratches and injury to the lips, which may be further inflamed by secondary infections. Fungal growth on the lipstick component may indicate component being dropped, contaminated by human hands, or stored in an environment where there was exposure to moisture, i.e. flooded warehouse, leaking window or roof, or conditions of heat and cold resulting in condensation. On the Jaclyn Cosmetics website, the company addressed why they chose not to recall the lipsticks. After a thorough investigation and extensive third-party testing, several labs and safety assessors have confirmed that while a fraction of our lipsticks did not meet our brand standards of quality, they are in full compliance with FDA regulations regulation and safe to use. Betty also did a test where she injected mold into three sterilized lipsticks to see if the preservatives in the lipsticks would prevent mold growth. 
When she checked the samples 24 hours later, she found there was no growth on the injected lipsticks. On July 1st, Ashley Pollard, a molecular biologist, posted a video where she did her own tests on the Jaclyn Cosmetics lipsticks. She didn't do a molecular-based test on the lipsticks, but she tested to see if there was any mold present in the lipstick. She filmed the process, showing how she tested the lipsticks, plus the new lipsticks and older lipsticks she used as control samples. She found the Jaclyn lipsticks look significantly different on her slide compared to the control lipsticks. There's a lot of foreign objects or pigment in here. I don't know what this is. I'm not a pathologist, but we definitely have some maybe undistributed pigment in here and some undistributed shimmer. And we have hair. Super gross. Ashley also didn't see any mold growth in her Jaclyn Cosmetics samples. On July 2nd, Kenna Whitnell posted her video with the results from her microbial report on the lipsticks. She said she sent in four different types of samples to be tested by the lab, and each of those samples were made up of multiple lipsticks to make up the full 10 gram sample size. She picked two control samples, Too Faced lipsticks with a similar formula to the Jaclyn Cosmetics formula, and Claire's lipsticks to compare with a lower cost alternative. For the Jaclyn Cosmetics samples, Kenna had a sample of open lipsticks and a sample of unopened lipsticks. She said the sample size was generally not large enough to give conclusive results, but it was the best she could do under the circumstances, and she thinks it's a good representation of both opened and unopened lipsticks. After going over the lab's method of testing the samples, Kenna revealed the results. For the Too Faced and Claire's control samples, the tests found they had nothing growing on them and they tested negative for common pathogens. The open Jaclyn Cosmetics sample and the unopened Jaclyn Cosmetics sample had the same results as the controls. Nothing was growing on them and they tested negative for the common pathogens. Kenna said that while the Jaclyn Cosmetics lipsticks came back negative for microbial contamination, that didn't mean the lipsticks weren't contaminated at all. All of these samples are negative for microbial contamination as far as all of the tests that I did. But is the product contaminated? Well, I think that we all visually saw from all the, you know, the microscope videos, all of the close-up videos. Yes, this product is contaminated. If you can see something in a product, it is definitely contaminated. She said the results may not be what people were expecting, but she wanted to be honest. I am here to bring you guys the facts and the science and not you know, the tea. Also on July 2nd, Betty posted some updated results on the positive mold sample from the lipstick component. My best guess? Aspergillus. Anyone know a mycologist they can show these to? Aspergillus is a fungus that's present in the air around us. It doesn't normally cause illness in healthy people, but it can cause disease in people who have weakened immune systems. On July 3rd, Jaclyn Cosmetics also released their lab test results. They tweeted, We want to assure everyone that so rich lipsticks are safe. If you would like to review the results of our recent safety tests, you can view the PDFs here. In a test dated June 26th, 2019, the lipsticks appeared to pass microbial testing, passing tests for yeast, mold, E. coli, and salmonella. In a microbiological certificate of analysis dated May 29, 2019, the 20 gram lipstick sample had a total plate count of less than 10 colony forming units, the same result Kenna showed in her testing. Other certificates of analysis done on June 24, 2019 on the shades Nude AF, Decaf, and Bad appeared to show the same results as the June 26 test. There were also several tests that showed several lipstick shades contained the compounds found in the ingredient list. However, there are a few interesting details in the reports. The infamous production code, GC05A, was listed as a batch lock code on the tests, not a production code and the product code was listed as NA. And on one of the certificates of analysis, the customer name is blacked out, but the top of the letters is still slightly visible, and it looks like it could say Morphe. Underneath the Jaclyn Cosmetics tweet releasing the reports, someone asked Kenna what she thought of the results. Kenna replied, This is not very informative. We don't know the sampling method used. Very limited shades were tested, reported. She did a GCMS analysis, which is extremely useless for safety. She should be running contamination testing, not showing us the composition of her vanilla fragrance. Angie Bergs also replied to the Jaclyn Cosmetics tweet. Confused why GC testing was performed, since it would be for volatile compounds. Seems like other methods, like ICP, would have been more useful in this situation. Also, if these were done in advance of the launch, it seems odd these weren't released when she made her follow-up video. Releasing those micro results would have at least been able to prove there wasn't microbial contamination. That seems to be the end of the situation for now.
So what's the big issue? The FDA's role with cosmetics and the realities of expired makeup. When all of the issues with Jaclyn's lipstick started coming to light, many people were wondering why the FDA wasn't stepping in. But that's not really the FDA's role. According to the FDA, the law does not require cosmetic products and ingredients, other than color additives, to have FDA approval before they go on the market. But there are laws and regulations that apply to cosmetics on the market in interstate commerce. In other words, unlike what Jaclyn said in her My Lipsticks video, every single ingredient in my lipstick is new and it is FDA. FDA approved. The FDA does not approve cosmetic products or ingredients, only color additives. The FDA can regulate cosmetics under the authority of two laws. The Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, the law Betty Wilder was referring to in her statement, and the Fair Packaging and Labeling Act. The FDNC Act does not allow the sale of adulterated or misbranded cosmetics. According to the FDA, adulteration refers to violations involving product composition, whether they result from ingredients, contaminants, processing, packaging, or shipping and handling. Here are some examples of what makes a cosmetic product adulterated. It bears or contains any poisonous or deleterious substance which may render it injurious to users under the conditions of use prescribed in the labeling thereof or under conditions of use as are customary and usual. It consists in whole or in part of any filthy, putrid, or decomposed substance. It has been prepared, packed, or held under insanitary conditions whereby it may have become contaminated with filth or whereby it may have been rendered injurious to health. The FDA says misbranding refers to violations involving improperly labeled or deceptively packaged products. Here are some examples of what makes a cosmetic product misbranded. Its labeling is false or misleading in any particular. Its label does not include all required information. The required information is not adequately prominent and conspicuous. Another surprising thing is the FDA does not approve cosmetic products before they enter the market. Under the law, cosmetics and their their ingredients do not require pre-market FDA approval. However, the FDA does have the authority to take action against products that are not in compliance with the law or against companies or individuals who are in violation of the law. Except for color additives, the FDA says a manufacturer can use almost any ingredient in a cosmetic formula as long as the ingredient and the finished cosmetic are safe under labeled or customary conditions of use, the product is properly labeled, and the use of the ingredient does not otherwise cause the cosmetic to be adulterated or misbranded under the laws that FDA enforces. If the FDA doesn't have to approve cosmetic products, who is responsible for making sure they're safe? According to the FDA, companies and individuals who manufacture or market cosmetics have a legal responsibility to ensure the safety of their products. Neither the law nor FDA regulations require specific tests to demonstrate the safety of individual products or ingredients. The law also does not require cosmetic companies to share their safety information with FDA. But the most interesting thing is the FDA cannot order a recall of a hazardous cosmetic. Recalling cosmetics is a voluntary action taken by manufacturers or distributors to remove hazardous or defective cosmetics from the market. The FDA isn't authorized to order recalls, but they can request a recall if the firm is unwilling to remove dangerous cosmetics from the market. However, there has been no mandatory recall of a cosmetic product in the US. If the FDA has reliable information that a cosmetic product is adulterated or misbranded, they can take regulatory action. For example, the FDA can go through the Department of Justice in federal court to remove adulterated or misbranded cosmetics from the market. Plus, cosmetics that aren't in compliance with the law can be subject to seizure when the government takes possession of property from someone who has either violated the law or is suspected of violating the law. Even if there is no grounds for FDA action with the Jaclyn Cosmetics situation, it's important to know what the FDA can do within the cosmetics industry. With all the speculation about Jaclyn's lipsticks being expired, some people were concerned about their own makeup expiring. Most people don't stay on top of product expiration dates because the product hasn't gone bad. But what can happen when you use makeup that's gone past the expiration date? According to some experts, you don't have to worry too much. Dr. Elizabeth Tanzi, an assistant clinical professor for the dermatology department at the George Washington University Medical Center, says, There are few issues expired makeup will cause, except 
it probably wouldn't be as fresh or the colors as vibrant. However, there can be some issues with using expired makeup. As your makeup ages, the ingredients inside the product will begin to corrode and oxidize, changing how the product performs. The preservative can also start to break down, allowing bacteria to form. Even if the cosmetic isn't opened, it still may not be ideal to use. It may look fine before you open it, but once the product is exposed to air, the expiration effects will take place. Plus, if you continually use expired makeup, you're at risk for breakouts and infections. Kelly J. Bartlett, a professional makeup artist, says, Using old eyeliners can irritate the delicate eye area, causing it to become puffy, red, and swollen. Expired powders can irritate your skin and cause little red bumps that look like acne and it can be hard to tell when your makeup is truly expired. Aside from the product smelling bad or crumbling, the FDA does not mandate expiration dates on cosmetic products. It's up to the brands themselves to accurately label their products with expiration dates. So how do you know when to toss your favorite products? There are some guidelines you can follow for common makeup items. You should be throwing out your mascara every three months, according to Dr. Joshua Zeichner, the Director of Cosmetic and Clinical Research in Dermatology at Mount Sinai Hospital. He said, as anything moist that's touching wet parts of the body, eyes, lips, open skin, lasts a shorter period of time. Most liquid and cream products, like concealer and foundation, generally have a shelf life of one year. These products contain more water, oils, and hydrating agents that can increase the risk of bacterial contamination. Powder products tend to last longer. Face powders and blushes can last up to two years, and eyeshadows are good for two years. As for lip products, traditional lipsticks can last up to two years, and lip glosses, or any lip product with a doe foot applicator are good for a year. If you don't know how long your makeup is good for, you can check the product's packaging for the period after opening symbol, a guideline that shows how many months you have to use the product after you open it. And before you apply any makeup, make sure you clean your face to help prevent bacteria from transferring to the product. There's a lot going on with this story, and it affects more than just influencers. No matter what you think of Jaclyn Hill or her launch, it's obvious the lipsticks are contaminated, and as a brand owner, Jaclyn should have responded sooner and issued a full recall, especially when public health and safety is at stake. That being said, it's important to keep the issue in perspective. There's no doubt that Jaclyn made many mistakes, and people were right to criticize her decisions and demand she take action. But did she deserve endless amounts of hate and threats? It's easy to get caught up in the bandwagon and pylon culture. And even when a callout is rooted in genuinely good intentions, things can quickly spiral out of control. The constant demands for Jaclyn to take action worked. The issue wasn't allowed to slip away and be forgotten, and customers at least got their money back for their contaminated lipsticks. And the continued calls to action can hopefully encourage Jacqueline to step up and ensure this doesn't happen again. But at the end of the day, we have to ask ourselves if we care deeply about the situation because of the health risks, or if we just want to see a controversial influencer finally fall from grace. What do you think of this story? Have you purchased from Jacqueline Cosmetics? Let me know in the comments below.